name is Gale, guys. Nexus here, and welcome back to Destiny 2. And in today's video, guys, we're here with Tuesday Reset, of course, meaning we have got some brand new stuff to kind of go over. And what we're going to be looking at today is going to be the Nightfall reward for this week. So if you don't know, of course, every week we get a new Nightfall reward. GMs are going to be up and everything as well, so you can start getting your deaths. But this week's itself is, of course, going to be what's on my back right now. You can see it, all of its glory. It's going to be the pre- Astianix 4. So the uh what are we gonna call this? So it's something easy. The annex? The annex itself, this weapon, it is a really, really dope ass bow. And it's definitely a lot more farmable than the Strident Whistle. Now I know a lot of people have Strident Whistle and whatnot, which of course you can get from the Vanguard event as well. So but what makes this special is it gonna be, of course, that it is gonna be adept this week. Of course, if you do the uh the GMs and everything. And also when it comes to rolls and everything on the annex, it does of course have all these art and traits, which are great, like wall card, which is so super nice on a bow. And when it comes to specific roles you can see on the screen now all the roles you can get if you have the right sort of roles in this you can kind of make it like a mini hush 2.0 the annex itself this weapon as i said has some really sweet roles in terms of the incandescent for pve you got shoot to loot as i said you got the arch step of perpetual motion precision instrument can actually be pretty nice in pve but incandescent is of course going to be just like the more bang, bang for your book perk and everything. But as I said, this is going to be uh, the Nightfall reward this week. You'll be able to get adept versions and everything, meaning that you can get, um, of course, adept mods and whatnot, and a little bit of bump to stats and whatnot, everything. And that's what makes it a little bit better than the Strident Whistle. And also the fact that you can kind of farm for this instead. Just do normal Nightfalls for this normal one. And then if you keep on doing your GMs, you'll, of course, guarantee yourself some adept versions. But as I said, this thing... This bow, it actually is really, really dope. And we're going to showcase what this is like in some PvP and some PvE. So without further ado, let's go to some PvP with the Annex bow. Alrighty, so we are going to be on the Rusky Lands, of course, with our Annex itself. And this is what it's going to be like in PvP and everything. Now, the roll I have is, of course, going to be the old uh, opening shot roll. So I should be able to hit some domes and... Okay, that's a body shot. <laughs> but of course, this still is going to do a ton of, of course, damage and everything. Because it is going to be a bow. And buddy, give me the heals. And oh my god, I forgot. Current steeds are as good as they used to be. I missed a shot. Oh my god, give me the kill. Oh, how am I still alive, buddy? <laughs> Scatter grenade. <laughs> oh, that is the chaos of the bow. Realistically, what I'm meant to be doing there is quick swapping, of course, to um, my hand cannon and whatnot. If I hit somebody, I shouldn't really bother going for another shot with this, even though I have, like, opening shot and everything. If I go for another shot with the uh, the bow, you can kind of see that the draw time is kind of large, and I am whiffing. What the? Thank you. <laughs> Body shot again. But of course, yeah, the draw time is going to be somewhat large in this. It is precision frame, so even though it hits like an absolute freaking truck, it's better to kind of quick switch. And that's mainly what most people will do with these sorts of weapons. I'm just kind of a, a masochist, and I like kind of just run around with the same weapon to get kills. And buddy, 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 my kill just got robbed. Oh, what? I hit that. I hit that. I hit that. Didn't I? Did I hit that? I'm so confused. Oh my god, I'm getting blasted from everywhere. Guys, where's my 1v1s at? I've got a freaking bow of all things you know screw it i'm so dead <laughs> oh my god i cannot aim with this i would love a night in action on this as well which honestly i know people would say reloading isn't really a big deal but what really is nice about night in action is that it's also the oh what the i didn't even hit him what the <laughs> but it's not also it's not just of course the reload it actually gives you a little bump to handling as well which on a bow like this is actually really nice and there's going to be the headshot damage now i just got stuck by a grenade but you can definitely see that the Annex itself, as far as PvP bows go, it is really nice. And as I said, people would rather go for... Oh, there's the freaking one tap, though. That's what I'm saying. You can do that sort of crap when you quick switch. And it's cheesy as all hell. It's really strong. So, uh, yep, that's why people do it. <laughs> but, of course, you can definitely just use the bow in of itself and just get, like, those domes he's going. Instead, the damage is going to be up there with... So, one of the highest you can kind of get going in PvP. I can definitely see... Even though going for, like, two body shots. And, oh, my God, I'm away from buddy. He whiffed as well. <laughs> forerunner but of course um getting even just body shots is gonna do absolute work i myself if i'm using a bow i actually prefer to use precision frames because they hit a lot more dome skis you can kind of see and they hit like a truck when you hit so i much prefer these over lightweights because i can double body shot too because i'm an ass at this game and you know what i need to double body like body shot barry everybody i mean realistically i probably should have showed this and oh there's a dome ski but i probably should have showcased this in uh checkmate control because that's where the bows are gonna be really nice you can kind of see that i am getting the iron trick going Oh, buddy. Oh, no. No, I didn't get that freaking hit in. No freaking way. And he came back after freaking healing. Oh, buddy, we are both just ass. Come on, swing it. Buddy, no. Guys, stop the double shot and come on. <laughs> Better devils. My man is living in the freaking past right now. But I will definitely say, of course, the bows, they are freaking great. And checkmate control will kind of really showcase them a lot more. And I'm just whiffing on this guy. Oh, my God. Okay, buddy, I need to reset a little bit. 
You really want to fight this though, right? <laughs> he actually went for it. <laughs> but obviously, uh, checkmate, when you get like, obviously, primary ammo is like king and everything. That is where this is going to do absolute work for you and everything. And oh my god, no! No! Freaking stupid ass super! But yeah, checkmate is where you're going to see the best effect kind of of bows and everything. I know people will still use the Monarch. And that's why when it comes to PvP and bows and everything, I will say bows are great. And there's the little freaking thing. And oh, I have freaking well of Radiance on. Oh, can I one tap with this? Oh my god, 180 freaking 9. I don't know if that's because I didn't draw fully. Oh my god, this is a shambles, boys. Can someone peek me? I've got a freaking bow that does a ton of damage. And there's the one tap. Oh. 189. Okay, yeah, I'm not doing max damage with this. <laughs> you know what? Maybe this actually worked out well because we're getting some freaking domes in there, buddy. Someone peek my bear. Someone peek my well a little bit more. I just want one more kill, buddy. That's all I'm freaking looking for. But yeah, you can definitely see that with the uh, extra damage buff and everything. You still can't really one tap or anything like that, so. It's not going to be a nice way to well, of course. I did not realize I had well on. But yeah, if I was going to use bows PvP, I would always kind of recommend the exotic bows. I mean, the Monarch is just so freaking nice in PvP. I know there is other ones you can kind of go in with as well. Wish Ender is dope too. It's just generally, it's they just give you a little bit more bang for your bulk. But I do know that there's people who just like certain roles on some legendary bows that honestly can do work. And is there a dude here? He was copping it and he just freaking dipped. But we'll get this guy. At, buddy, thank you. At... I'm getting Telesto. I actually got pre-fired Telesto. Oh my god. We're getting some gamers right now. But yeah, Monarch and all those sorts of weapons. They kind of just give you more bang for your buck and everything. You get a lot more work kind of done with them. Not that they're bad or anything, these bows and everything. Like, you definitely see you can hit headshots. And I love the Origin trait, the wall card. It's so nice to see a little ball flaw uh, fall after you get a Domsky. But I definitely will say that you can kind of see they're not bad and everything. And they're good for, like, double tapping. But... I'd be doing just as well if I had a freaking, what's it called? Oh, buddy. <laughs> if I was using the Monarch right now, I'd be able to poison people. And it just gives you a little bit more kind of reaction time. Wait, I just think that generally speaking that the uh, the Annex, I think it's a really dope bow. And it could definitely do work. Like you see the damage is going to be really nice. But so when it comes to bows in general, not that there's better weapons or better rolls. It's just, I think when it comes to um, bows in PvP, I think that you just have better chances. And oh, he just got sauced. But it doesn't get a better chance with exotic bows and everything. But as I said, this is still really nice to kind of pick up. If you want like a really nice hush 2.0 sort of bow. Get yourself a sort of like successful warm up kind of um, even like light action or freaking what's it called? The Archer's Tempo or something like that. Archer's Tempo is actually a really nice when you can kind of get going. And yo, give me the kill. No, my kill got robbed. What? I just got launched. Did I just die? To I don't know how I just died. I just got freaking launched into like a Nova Bomb into a freaking... A, like a well or something like that a freaking solar freaking pit you know though we're actually gonna send this real quick and we're just gonna absolutely blast people come here boys come on come on boys we're gonna put this at the window oh give me the kill give me the kill give me the kill oh okay we got one all right can i get a headshot please thank you there's the damage <laughs> i said i'm gonna do damage with this but i don't think that my well is gone what who destroyed my well so fast it just like what I don't think I've ever had my well get absolutely obliterated that freaking quickly. And boys, we could try pull this back. Ah, uh, I think we've actually lost this. They're going to take B now and just win. Alrighty, so we are going to do the PvE side of things, of course, with a little bow to cut. I am going to be using our precision instrument roll, which realistically is not is probably one of the better PvE ones. I know incandescent is there, and especially with solar mods. It is great, but what I will give it uh, with the solar mods this week is that, or this season, is that if I just get Radiant kind of going from precision hits... This bow in general can do work. As I said, you get that precision instrument going. You get, of course, the ex solar ignitions going when you have radiant. You can see that. You have radiant and, of course, get a precision kill with the lens. I do think that the um, the precision instrument is actually a really kind of nice roll for this. Especially if you're against the enemies that I can actually hit in the head like these ones. If you got to get your radiance going or whatnot, this is definitely going to be a bow to kind of go in with. It's definitely geared more toward PvE, which most kind of, of course, um... PvE bow, or of course, Nightfall rewards kind of are. But what's really nice about this bow is that, of course, you'll get Radiant going pretty quickly. And also, I do have Stun and Recovery, which will be really nice. So when I stun champions, I'll get some freaking um, health back and all that sort of crap. And also, it is going to be really, really nice when it comes to uh, using those, like, wall card art and trade. As I said, you get kills, you just spawn those little orbs. So in a good incandescent roll or whatnot, it'll be really nice. And as I said, you can kind of get this damage starting to ramp up when you do get your precision instrument. You can see by six is the max. I think that's like a 30% buff. So the damage does start to absolutely stack when you start hitting your crits, which of course is what you want to be doing with a bow, especially because you do see you get that um, 
You get the radiant kind of going, which is just going to be really nice. Now, I could actually get a headshot. That would be great. <laughs> but of course, you can get radiant going other ways. It's not just that. You can see the weakening effect from using solar abilities. As I said, there is so many reasons I would say this is a dope ass bow. I think precision instrument, though, is just a really nice break kind of for it. But yeah, as I said, it's just going to be really nice for like kind of DPSing and everything. You can definitely see the damage is going to be there. And you can get your radiant going pretty easily. As I said, it's like a couple of shots with a bow. Because it's kind of based off weaponry and everything when you get the rating going on precision hits. Bows are very simple to get it going. So, in GMs especially where I will say bows do a lot more work. I know utility bows do better in terms of wish ender and everything. But in terms of just a general kind of legendary solar bow, this is a really sweet one. You got to stop with bows this season as well. You're going to do work with this bow PvE. I think this is legit a solid ass PvE bow. Probably one of the best solar ones to kind of get. As I said, you get raiding going pretty easily. You can see I have Archer's Tempo on this as well. I kind of forgot to mention that, but... Two headshots, I got Radiant. Next kill, starts igniting. I said, there's so much kind of going for this bow in PvE. As I said, it's legit that it's solar is like the biggest thing. I wonder... I can actually proc Radiant off the shields. It's legit two precision hits and I'm freaking Radiant, which is just that extra 10%. But as I said, it's not just really about the extra 10% damage. It's more just the precision hits or precision kills kind of kills and ignite, which for me is just... It's so sweet. Like, you can see, it's so nice for ag clear and everything. And as I said, the damage is still going to be there. You can see precision instruments kind of going. Scorching with the mods as well this season. Solar weapons, of course, is going to do real well this season. So this is like your first chance to kind of get this one adept. You can definitely see it can absolutely wreck it. Archer's Tempo with the precision instrument and everything. Oh, it's just beautiful. I'm telling you, this is a really dope ass bow PvE. I mean, PvP, it wasn't bad. But PvE is where this thing is going to her for you because yeah it just has everything going for it this season i know other seasons you might think that it might not be that great but i just think this season with the course as i said all those mods it's gonna be really dope and did i oh i actually sniped him out of that that is freaking insane did not think i'd hit that shot but against this sort of guy we'll get the freaking instrument going give me all this extra damage there we go and i said it's just it's so nice with the precision instrument because i get the radiant proc off precision hits anyway so just hitting my shots. I'm just amping this weapon up so freaking high. As I said, incandescent, don't get me wrong. Ton of fun can definitely do work. But what makes this really dope is that I just get consistent damage going. And I don't even need to kind of get kills to get it going. I get it for just hits. So in higher end difficulties where you're not really getting as many kills, that is where this is going to come in clutch for you. Because you'll just do so much damage with it. As you can kind of see, just absolutely blasting tanks out of freaking just killing all these legionaries. It's just a dope ass bow PvE right now. And... 100% probably worth doing the Nightfall this season for this because I think this is the first time this season it's been up for Adept. And also, Solar Mods, Solar Weapons are just going to absolutely clap this, year, this season. They're like legit. They're meant to do Stasis and Solar Weapons being like the main thing and it's just Solar everywhere. Nobody's using Stasis Weapons. It's legit just all Solar stuff. All right, final boss time, of course, with a little Annex that good. And this is where I will say it's going to be really nice, of course, for the, uh, the damage. You can see Precision Instrument. It's going to be very easy to proc. I'm getting your radiant going with it, as I said. It's just, it's just a straight up bump of damage. You start, start, start to scorch things and everything. It's super easy against bosses and everything. Get some kills, get your ignites going. I just really do think in the current... Oh my god, I got blasted. But in the current season, I just think that this weapon... It goes in really hard. I mean, there's no other weapon in the game. Well, there is other solar weapons kind of go in with under bows. It says Strat Whistle is there. But when it comes to adept solar weapons... This is just a really nice bow to go in with, as I said. It's just got so much kind of going for it this season. I mean, you can get right into set going with anything, but Precision Instrument for me is just really nice for DPS kind of damage and everything. As I said, I know you can go in with Incan, but that's kind of lower tier sort of engagements. If you got like this sort of Nightfall, Precision Instrument is just a really nice perk. I would love if Precision Instrument did a little bit more as well damage wise because I know people will hit me saying, yeah, but you can get a roll with like Frenzy, which is basically the same thing. Frenzy's a little bit less damage, but I know it's pretty much the same. I think, as I said, Precision Instrument, I think it's 25 or 30%. It's very close to Frenzy. Frenzy does add to so much for so easy. But I still do think that this is a really nice row, especially because, as I said, it can be adept and everything too, meaning that you got those extra mods going, like big ones or whatnot. So I just think overall, yeah, this is just a really solid bow and really definitely worth it picking up this season. I think the season that came out, it was also worth it too. It came out the season of the Witch. Which I believe was a very solar sort of um, season as well. Everybody was rocking solar stuff. I think that season because the mods are so good. But I definitely think that when it comes down to it, you should try yourself get your hands on this sort of bow because 
He will do absolute work with the right row. I said PVE, this thing's a master class of a bow. Probably one of the best seasonal legendary bows to kind of go in with. Well, that is it for me. And of course, the Annex 4 itself, the pre the Annex 4, the solar bow you kind of, go, of course, get from the Nightfall this week. You can, of course, get a deaf versions too. As I said, GMs are open everything, so you can get your deaf versions of this if you want to. And I just think that just because of this current season, with the way the mods are, as these mods for solar are just so ridiculous. It's legit. It's Flint Strikers, Rapid Solar Weapon Precision Hits, and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows Grant Radiant. Draw on the Razor Precision, so while Radiant Solar Precision Final Blows cause combats to ignite, it just has so much kind of going for it. As I said, there's just so many things like while Radiant didn't increase weapon damage to combatants affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs. Get like a good slice weapon and everything to kind of pair with this. I mean, it's just freaking insane. Radiant causes solar weapons to apply scores. I, I mean, there's so much going for it. As I said, solar weapons this season, they are banging. And this is the role I was kind of using in the PvE arena. You can see Archer's Tempo with Precision Instrument. Another banger of a bow, as I said, when you get your Precision Hit going in, it's really, really nice with this instrument going. I do that extra bit of damage. You get Radiant going. It's basically on like two or three hits with this bow. You can get Radiant going, depending on how fast you are. I just think overall that like, this is like the best season to try to get this Annex. Of course, it's going to be most useful this season. Maybe not so much next season if you get different mods, but currently in this season and how long it is, this is going to be one of the best bows to use PvE because of all the mods you can kind of go in with. And also because it has like such nice iron traits. As I said, you got Stunning Recovery. Getting Radiant, of course, gives you piercing and everything too, so you can try that as well. And of course, Walkar and Vanguard Syndication is going to be really nice. As I said, there's just... There's so much going for this bow, and I do think that when it comes to actual Nightfall rewards, this is probably the one that's worth picking up the most out of them all. Like, all the other ones are nice, but I think just because of this season, this is the one that you should be trying to get your hands on, because it's definitely the best out of the bunch in the current pool. Pick up the Annex this week, it is the Nightfall reward. Get yourself some Death Rolls if you want to do some GMs, and it's just a really solid bow PvE altogether to pick up. But regardless, if you liked the video, show us a like, I don't want to see more content, subscribe, and fantastic day, and hopefully I'll see you in the next collective in the next one.